Been waiting for this one for a long time, and now finally, Industries of Titan is fully released into version 1.0. Hello again there friends and fans, Raptor here, and welcome to a very beautiful and very interesting and very cool city builder known as Industries of Titan, more like we're building factories and such. Well, today's episode is sponsored by the makers of Industries of Titan, so you can check it out with the link down below in the description. We played this game many times before on the channel when it first was in a beta, then as it entered early access, and now we're going to check it out again and compare all the features that are new and improved from the very beginning to now. Now this is a very cool cyberpunk-like industry builder with combat and uh, the ability to build defenses and defend against uh, raiders and bandits who may try to attempt to attack our colony. But there's also a peaceful mode for the game too, where there is a campaign, scenario mode, a zen mode, and a survival mode. So if you're a big fan of other games like, for example, Factorio, this one might definitely interest you. It's got a really cool voxel art style that I've always adored since the very beginning, and uh, I'm happy to be back to check it out again. It's really, really a cool game. So, again, check it out with the link down below in the description if you're interested. Thank you very much for smashing like on today's video, and thank you very much for subscribing. All right, let's go ahead and jump right into it then and start ourselves a new game. As I mentioned, there is a campaign, scenario mode, survival mode, and zen mode. Previously on the channel, we've usually taken a look at survival mode. Scenario mode, of course, uh, we can set our difficulties and change things to be endless and increase the length of the mission and or difficulty too. But for the campaign, it's pretty well set, and it's uh, also the way it's intended to be played. To conquer Titan, yeah, industries of Titan, the moon, by the way. So, um, yeah, quite an interesting uh, setup, I'd say. Let's go ahead and watch some intro cutscenes and get right into it. Let's go. All right, here we are. Apparently, this is the campaign screen where we can select different areas on Titan to conquer and then eventually make a name for ourselves to vie for uh, a seat on the council, which apparently is the most powerful group that controls Titan and all of its valuable resources. So after we complete the first mission, we'll uh, be able to have access to council favors, and that's going to be an important thing, basically like trading off of the planet. Now, every time we play, this will be a little bit different each time. Maybe the first level is the same for tutorial purposes and to be easy, but eventually we're going to have to conquer this whole map. And uh, kind of cool. You can get an idea for the art style by just looking at all the stuff here. Really nicely polished. I've always enjoyed that art style like that. Isometric, yet clean and voxely at the same time. Love it. All right, let's go ahead and start the new mission. Looks like we need to gain 20 favor with the council, and it's a pretty short mission, but here's some of our goals and things that we can expect, including rainfall and what the terrain will be like or what the rebels will be like too. Apparently very easy. Makes sense for the first mission. Let's go. And here we are. Pick your starting bonus. Insurance down the hatch or slumlord. Oh, that's kind of cool. And uh, let's see. Generate 500 credits when a citizen dies. I hope not. Oh, wait. No, no. They earn 20% less credits. That's not good. Uh, residential buildings next to crevices produce 50% less waste. Oh, <laughs> they're just dumping it down into the planet's core. Residential buildings hold 150% more and they generate more waste. Uh, well, uh, that's kind of good, and that's not as hard to deal with. I love this art, though. Man, I can't get over that. Let's go with the uh, Slumlord. Welcome Raptor the Thunder. Slumlord. Great. My name is Shiaro Hess, and I am your corporation monitor. Every founder on Titan is assigned a monitor like me. I make sure you treat Titan with respect. It is the Council's property, after all. If we work together, we'll make this city very efficient. Cool. All right, so uh, the way I understand it... Let's begin it, by testing your oversight capabilities, Founder. Oh, look at that. All these destroyed First, buildings. Try to move your surveillance camera around your land. And I love that. It's like an early RTS uh, cutscene or something like that. But all these buildings that are here, the way I understand it, is that these are ruins from previous attempts to try to colonize and capitalize on Titan. Sun shafts coming through, too. R RTX on. All right, uh, what, let's see. Hold the right mouse button to drag the camera. Okay. Looks like there's a rebel Excellent camp. Work. Now, let's test your camera's rotation and zoom function. All done. Working as expected. 
one last thing to ensure everything is running correctly. Try pausing and resuming, and check that your speed register is working properly. Oh, upon seeing our headquarters, it reminded me that we can actually build inside of these buildings too. So when we lay out a factory, we can actually build inside of it and kind of make our own conveyor belts, our own uh, oxygen producers, our own smelters, that type of thing. So uh, not only do we lay out a city, but we also build the factories inside. And then also, you know, factory A can connect to factory B, and then we can have all sorts of levels of connection and interconnectivity inside the buildings. Pretty cool. All right, let's see. Press space bar. Do it again. Uh, one and two and three. Oh, shift one, two, three. And then increase it by doing it through the UI. All right, all done. New directive, toggle your territory overlay. Okay. Excellent. Everything seems to be in order. Then we begin with your main duties. Founder, please take a close look at your starting territory. The outlying tiles adjacent to your headquarters belong to you. You are free to do as you please with this land. Any land outside your territory, however, belongs to the council. If you wish to use that land, you will have to pay the council with influence. Ooh. What I also like about these cutscenes is that voice actor and that quality of audio reminds me of Diablo, and that's just good. <laughs> Especially, I guess, this isometric art style, too. All right, let's go ahead and turn off territory overlay and see what else we can take a peek at. Looks like it just gives us our borders for our influence. All right, surveying the ruins. Founder, I see you eyeing those ruins. Intriguing, aren't they? True. The ruins cover almost every inch of Titan. They're the wreckage of an earlier, more foolish age. The doomed settlers who built them left many resources and artifacts behind. Your territory already contains some ruined structures. You can survey them in your city view. Survey results will show you the contents of the ruins. Issuing a survey order will assign an employee to do it for you. Try surveying the ruins you control. All right, let's do just that. <laughs> you can see him running. Uh, another thing, too, that comes to mind is, uh, yeah, it's supposed to be raining a lot more, so it's kind of cool to see different weather on what should just be a thick atmosphere and kind of uh, relatively boring to look at, but it's not. And the crevices are really nice, really in a good spot. Very cool to actually kind of build against and consider in our designs. Okay, let's go ahead and uh, collect ruins inside the territory. There we go. Salvaging ruins. Founder, survey results have shown that some nearby ruins contain valuable resources. Resources are used to construct buildings and devices. Our city needs them to grow. Try salvaging one of the ruins to gather its resources now. The resources you find there will be placed in storage by your employees, if there is storage available. All right, so now we're going to claim this building. We have to kind of purchase it, per se, via influence from the council. So let's go ahead and do that. And then let's salvage as instructed. Yeah, he's basically using like a vacuum. Wow, it's shrinking the building down. Uh, these here are isotopes, and there's also minerals, so these two things together are what we'll be making um, more buildings out of, I suppose. Same with these buildings as well. A lot of the ruins will provide us with those, and could also provide us with research. So there's a big potential to unlock additional things just by claiming ruins. What is that in the ground? An artifact patch. Like a destroyed satellite or something. Weird. Founder. You may be interested to learn that there are other secrets hidden inside the nearby ruins. They can contain artifacts, rare and valuable technology from before Titan's fall. When you select a ruin, you can choose to extract artifacts instead of salvaging it. But keep in mind, not all ruins contain artifacts. You must survey them first to make sure. Artifacts are very rare, so use them wisely. If you have many artifacts, you can always donate them to the council. It will earn you quite a bit influence. Cool, you got it. Yeah, surveying is a very important thing to do, especially at the start. Great way to boost up your influence, ma uh, minerals, materials, whatever it may be. It's a good move to make sure that you can grow effectively without too much delay. Until you start switching over to the mineral patches and isotopes. Wow, look at the weird waves on the screen. They've added a lot of great detail that was not present previously. I'm impressed.
Good. Sounds like the northern lights, but probably radioactive. Well, you know what I mean. More radioactive. All right, let's go ahead and extract artifacts from the ruins. We have two here. Unknown amount there. Ah, oh, let's go with the four here. We've claimed that, so let's extract. You can even see the corporate logo that we chose on the front of our building, too. Now, these buildings are also upgradable, so as we go inside here just for a moment, uh, we can not only rename the building, but we can also upgrade the building from the outside, which allows us more room on the inside. So the employees here are actually just storing things. Um, we can actually put down conversion capsules, habitat pods, monetization stations. These are literally people will they'll watch mobile ads and such in order to earn money for you. So you basically brainwash somebody to click on mobile ads and I guess in the future you get paid a small percentage of that, so Oh, hey there. Founder. Right, right. They told me you'd be checking in soon. I'm Vern Skoll, Hi, Vern. Waste Management Officer. Now, I think that title is pretty hmm, reductive, but yeah, I'm the one who moves the waste around. You make the trash, I move the trash. You dump the trash, I burn the trash. It's a beautiful partnership. Now, boy, you do have a lot of trash piling up around your city, don't you? Sure do. No worries yet, though. We'll handle it later. Yeah, later. That'll always work out. Never now, but later. All right, let's meet our new council representative. Welcome to Titan, Founder. I am Anar Peer, your council representative. There are currently nine council members on Titan. Each of us sponsors and oversees different corporations on this moon. I am your sponsor. Your city permit and council funding are thanks to me. I hope you will return my faith with high profits. Would. And remember, everything the council has given you can easily be taken away. Are you from YouTube, ma'am? Okay. Anyway. Oh, and now we have to enter some buildings. Founder, the council has granted you a headquarters facility. Enter your headquarters by selecting it in your city view. I suggest you build some devices inside of your headquarters. Every new city needs a few essential devices to operate smoothly. All right, what do we get started with then, ma'am? Founder, this headquarters is the best place to build the devices that will keep your city running. The first devices you need are storage containers to hold your minerals and isotopes. Build a storage container here in your headquarters. If you need more room, you can also build one inside a factory. That's true. Okay, let's go ahead and start with another small storage. Very nice. We also need to store waste, so let's do that. Hey, founder, I got us a, a temporary solution to our waste problem. There's waste all over our city, but you can build a waste receptacle in your headquarters to store it. Your employees will automatically pick up the waste and place it into storage. Uh, it's not a long-term solution, but it'll have to do for now. Besides, if the citizens can't see the waste, it might as well not be there, right? <laughs> right? Uh. Out of sight, out of mind, exactly. Now, later on, we actually have to burn the trash and could create pollution that way, and so, although you would imagine the atmosphere of Titan would probably be toxic and or deadly to humans to begin with, Oh boy, wait till humanity gets there and starts burning trash. Oh yeah. Hey, founder! Hey! Thrilled to finally meet you. What's up, Brad? I'm Deanna Oak, your power systems engineer. I'll be managing your city's power systems. That means fuel, energy production, energy storage, all that great stuff. It's my passion, honestly. 
Since I was a kid, I wanted nothing more than to slam the contact switch on the Giga battery and see the sky light up. And after years of school and grad school and VR training programs and <laughs> dropping out of VR training programs, I'm finally here. We'll do great stuff together, Founder. Trust me. My career is on the line, and you can count on me to take that seriously. Cool. Well, thank you, ma'am. Do you have a mission for me? Founder, no. we will soon run up against the borders of your territory. The city must expand. Yes, good. You can claim any parcel of land from the council with influence. You can spend influence to acquire any plot of land in your city view, even if it is not connected to land you already own. But choose carefully. Not all ruins are equally profitable. All right, so we can claim any area inside the yellow. Anything outside is outside of the, uh, what do they put it as? The, um, yeah, the command area, which is around our command center. Now, we can expand upon this with other buildings, so eventually our influence can grow. Hey, founder. Um, I checked inventory, and we don't have enough fuel. Oh. We need fuel to generate energy for our buildings and devices. Luckily, there's fuel all around us in the air. True. It's called Zethane, and it's a finite but easily tapped gas that pours out of crevices and sinkholes. Titan's air is so toxic, it contains many flammable substances we can burn for energy. So, build a fuel fabrication device in your headquarters or in a factory. These devices don't require any external energy of their own. And they operate without employees. Very convenient. Very, very convenient. All right, job done, ma'am. Hey, founder. So you've got to be careful where you put your fuel fabricators if you want to make enough fuel. Zethane is extracted from the air on Titan. So you'll want to build where the concentration is juiciest. If you expand towards crevices and sinkholes and put your fuel fabricators there, you'll be fabricating fuel next to the source. Not only will it take much longer for crevices and sinkholes to run out of Zethane, but you'll also convert more fuel per minute because the air will be so rich. Oh, and don't forget to spread your fabricators out a bit so they aren't draining just one area. Oh, and Founder, if you want to know how much Zethane an area has, there's always the Zethane overlay. You can toggle it at the bottom of your screen in the city view. Ooh. Weird. I don't remember this at all. Um, but yeah, as she mentioned, it's coming up. <coughs> oh, sorry, coming out of the... <coughs> okay, let's not zoom in. <laughs> That's a little toxic. Let's uh, stay away from that. Yeah. Uh, so it's coming out of crevices and sinkholes. Uh, are these liquid lakes of, like, Mercury? Oh boy, every, everything's dangerous here. Even the mobile ads that we have to watch. Okay, Founder. It's finally time to turn our fuel into energy. Okay. Most buildings and devices need an external source of energy in order to operate. Right. Build an energy generator somewhere on empty floor space, in your headquarters, or in a factory. The generator will convert fuel into energy. Okay. So now we need to build an energy generator. So it'll take what we're producing here from the small fuel fabricator to the... Uh, what are we going to make? Let's see. What are we going to make? What are we going to make? Energy. We want... Uh, let's do a small generator to start. And we can fit it in about... Yeah. There we go. And then since we're going to make more fuel than we can burn, we'll do a small fuel tank here. So now we're making our energy converter and our... Small storage tank. Perfect. All right, the juice is flowing. It's time to send that energy out to the buildings and devices that need it. Energy doesn't travel on its own. Huh, I wish. We need relays to carry the energy. Let's build some relays now. They'll power everything the grid touches. Just make sure that all the buildings and devices that need energy are connected to the grid, and that the grid has an energy source. Alright. You got it. So basically we're making plugs where energy can be sent out of the building. So if we had another generator nearby, we could ship it all out through this small relay. So we could build multiple generators to 
basically make this like a startup power plant. Founder, it seems that you successfully constructed an energy system to serve your city. Sure did. However, your future population also needs to be stored adequately. Yes. I suggest you construct habitat pods inside your headquarters. You can set these pods up next to your factory equipment. Wow. Don't worry. Your citizens won't mind. Look at how cool that is. Oh, is this like rain showers? It looks like um, almost clouds blowing over. It's so weird. Anyway. All right. Time to make some housing, quote unquote. Build two habitat pods. All right. Looks like we need some more minerals for that. Let's return to the city and start gathering resources. Minerals 12. Minerals 10. Isotopes 1. Minerals 15. Let's go with that one. We'll salvage everything around us so we can just build, baby, build. Alright, our credits are 3,000. Minerals are 3. Isotopes are 6. We've got four waste, four artifacts, and where is our influence? We have a population of 8 out of 10. We have 99 influence. We're gaining 4.1 per minute, so it looks like we have a max of 100. Might, might want to use some of that, too. All right, now we should have enough to make what we need to. Let's go back into the HQ. And let's go with the habitat pod. I think these need power. So we'll go with something like that. Now they're also mentioning that we could do this inside of a factory. So we could literally take a factory building and construct that on the outside and then turn it almost into a barracks. It would be a like a bunkhouse or a really low quality house. We could uh, start with one factory and build tons of those on one floor. But we would need power coming in too. So you can definitely create your main HQ as your power generator and then build a factory with tons of habitats inside. Space Station Operations, are you the replacement? Sure am. Oh, uh, never mind. You're the new founder, right? I'm Erlen Fletch, your local spaceport operator. But you can call me Fletch. Have you been up here? No? The space station is, well, it's right above you. Council Operation, low-level orbit. Every few cycles, the council arranges for a new set of trade ships to dock up here. They're carrying cargo and migrants, ready to head down to spaceports all over Titan's surface. You can find the spaceport in your city view. I hope you last longer than the last founder the council sponsored. Seriously, it's rough out here. Oh boy. Uh, rebel threat level increasing from level 4 to level 7 now, or at least 7%. Alright, founder. So you probably noticed the spaceport is locked up. Yes. See, the council doesn't do things for free. You gotta pay to play around here. If you want access to those ships in the spaceport, first, you gotta trade a few artifacts. Yeah, I think it's ridiculous too, but don't tell anyone I said that. I uh, need this job pretty bad. Fleeters, like me, can only work in zero G. Fleeters. All right, let's unlock the spaceport. Now we can get migrants. City livability is 20%. Wow. Well, at least we can see a little bit of information. Oh, and here's the other trade ships we can call down. Some which bring people, some which bring uh, isotopes and minerals, and some which bring trash with that. So there's always a mix of... That's always good with the bad. The facts of life. Welcome to the spaceport, Founder. Here's where all the big moves happen on Titan. Now that you have access to the spaceport, you can see ships headed toward Titan full of cargo and migrants. You can buy what they're carrying with influence. This is your primary way of increasing your city's population. If you're getting migrants, make sure you have somewhere to house them. Otherwise, I can't send them down. Sorry. Rules are rules. And, uh, don't be surprised if they bring a lot of waste with them, too. You'll just have to deal with it. Yes, indeed. Alright, let's go ahead and take the one with two... Uh, people with some minerals and isotopes and some trash. Not a big deal. Sweet. And there they come. Perfect. 
Commander, it appears that you are running out of free space for devices. As your city grows, you will always need more floor space. Always. If your headquarters has no more room, you can always build additional factories and install the devices there. If you are to power your factory with energy generated inside another building, you will want to build this new factory close by. I'm sure your power engineer will explain how to do this later. That is her department, after all. When construction is complete, you can enter the factory interior and customize it, just like your headquarters. Alright, build a factory in the city view. You got it. I will build it over Meow. Now employees will come out of the HQ and they'll start constructing. And then we'll be able to put more housing in there if and when needed. Now they come. And there we go. Alright, this is my favorite thing in the game is watching buildings get constructed. There's some 3D printing that goes on and the taller the building, uh, the 3D printers will actually go up and up and up with the scaffolding. And so if you have a building that's maybe like a, maybe a 2x2 two two or a 1x2 or in this case a 1x1, one one, uh, everything that's printed on it will kind of work. It looks realistic to where it's going the whole length of the building. Actually kind of cool. Uh, looks like there's a new ship that has arrived. Good. We can uh, take advantage of that in the spaceport if we want to. Wow, ten people. We need a lot of living space, though. We're only allowed to have... Uh, I guess we have eight at the moment. Alright, now they want us to go to ins the interior view. We can call this Factory 1 or Factory A, or we can call it Oxygen Factory or Fuel Factory and customize it however we like. Greetings, Founder. So glad to finally meet you. I'm Lyo Visk, your head of human assets. Human resources. Everyone here in the human assets office has just been aching to get on a conference call with you. Oh, God. Our philosophy? Eliminate cost centers and build human efficiency. We transform people from a human resource into a monetary resource. Are you from EA, sir? Okay. Uh, let's go... Monetize your citizens, wait. Ah, uh, yes. So you've decided to monetize your citizens. Excellent. They're going to need jobs. Lots of jobs. When citizens work, they earn credits. We harvest those credits by exposing them to high click-through video advertisements. To begin, construct monetization stations inside your headquarters or factories. Once those devices are built, our citizens can start enjoying some fresh, exciting adverts. Yeah, don't ask me how that works, but apparently money, good, make, good. Let's build two. Only need one, but let's build two. Alright, then we'll have to convert some employees. Uh, there's different types of employees. We can have city employee and ship employee and citizens, too. So actually, we have two out of four citizens and then uh, eight out of ten employees. They all do different things with their classes. Hey there, you ever hooked up a building to an energy grid before? Your generators are producing energy, but they can't get it to the grid unless you build some energy bridges. Build an energy bridge somewhere inside your headquarters, then connect your generators to it with an energy relay. Once the generators are hooked up to an energy bridge, the grid outside can access the building's energy. You can also use energy bridges to pass energy between different floors of the building. Once it's on the grid, this building can act as an energy source for other buildings in your city. And if you need energy to flow from the city to inside your buildings, it works the same way too. Build an energy bridge inside your headquarters and it can be connected to the city energy grid. All right, so basically it's what I had mentioned before. Uh, the power will go into the relay and then out through the bridge. So two different things to kind of collect it and then export it. And then here, it will go to the energy pylon, which will then be able to send it to the factory over here. So it should work. Thank goodness. And then this building should be online as well. Founder, our city is bursting at the seams. We need to grow. But, if we want to grow our corporation, we'll need a real energy grid in this city. Energy works on a city-wide grid, just like it works in our headquarters and factories. To get our city's energy grid online, build an energy pylon that connects your headquarters and factory. 
Make sure that your factory has an energy bridge too, or else it can't receive power from the outside. Yep. We got it. So they're delivering everything by hand, and then someone will come over with the old constructor gun. And yep, so now we should be able to have our relay. We'll send it out to the buildings and our energy bridge, which will bring it into here. So we should have power as soon as the employees are at their stations. We have enough for one monetization station. It is powered. One out of one online. Zero out of one offline. But since it's disabled and nobody's working there, I think it's offline then since we don't have enough workers. Ah, founder. I've been meaning to talk to you about conversion capsules. Oh, boy. It's where Titan's industries transform obedient citizens into even more obedient employees. We market the procedure as training, but the process is really more technical, and the effects are permanent. Once they've gone through conversion, your employees will be able to work basically forever without breaks or sleep. Good. Now, there may Good. be some long-term consequences that medical science isn't currently aware of, but it is a voluntary process, so your conscience is clear. Quote, unquote, voluntary. Oh, the music is so good in this game as well. Another thing I uh, certainly appreciate. Some good banging tunes. Right, let's go ahead and put this building here. So it's basically a capsule that someone will go into and be brainwashed about all the company lore. And like, uh, I don't know, all the, uh, well, as I mentioned, brainwashing, right? The company logos, logos, slogans. There we go. Logos. That's a good way to combine slogans and logos. Wow, well, that was not slow go. That was quite fast. Nicely done, boys. All right, founder. Now that you've built your conversion capsule, you're ready to convert citizens into employees. Start by selecting one of your conversion capsules. This is where you'll pay for new employees. Give it a try now. Your citizens are very eager to sign up for conversion. Are they? Are they really, though? Alright, let's build another generator there. I guess it has to cover both sides of the uh, structure. Alright, looks like it's enabled, but offline because there's nobody to train. We need more people. Let's go ahead and recruit some more. We need, like, two. We have four, sixteen... Oh, there we go. Oh, living space is two. Increase spaceport storage, 1,000 credits. Let's do that. It'll give us access for a little bit more deals coming in. Uh, we can build some more habitats. That'll allow us to support more people. So let's do that quickly. This game is the prettiest at nighttime with all the rain going. It's absolutely, absolutely gorgeous. Go ahead and plop that down. That should allow us to get two, four, six then. And, of course, we could always go over to the factory, but for demonstration purposes, and since this is just a simple campaign mission, teaching us, we'll just do things like that. All right, let's go ahead and go back to the spaceport. And let's buy a trade ship, or at least rent one, or pay, pay for the delivery, I guess. We have 37 seconds on one of these. Uh, the staggered XM-17. Hmm. Oh man, that is a absolute banger. Wow. <laughs> this must be a new track. I don't remember this one, but Space Bank, Titan Banger going on. All right, five seconds and we should be able to import uh, new resources and human assets, quote unquote. Ah, darn. We don't have five, but of course we could do that inside the factory. So let's go ahead and not miss out anymore and try to build a few more. We'll do our habitat pods over here. Now we can always uh, move around with these. It's a little bit of a, almost like Tetris, a balancing act of rotating things and flipping them all around. So that way they'll fit. But we can always demolish something. We can move it. We can redesign. And with upgrades, that's something that you're definitely going to do. So a lot of your factories, uh, for example, can be expanded. So this factory level one, we can build another factory to it, and we can make it twice as long. 
we can make a longer production line inside the building and we can also make multiple factories and we can also make multi-floor factories so there's a lot of options to move things around so obviously you can't really do everything you want to on the first wave you have to wait a little while that's important let's speed up time a little bit and we want to try to get uh, another building done we need some more lovely employees. Apparently this has no power either. Are we producing enough? Let's check. Well, we could always produce more. Ship should be coming in shortly. Ah, uh, yeah, we can also burrow the HQ underground, too. I saw that option just a moment ago. Now, it's telling me that power is offline here. Hmm, energy storage is zero. We can build large batteries outside if we need to. Uh, let's go. Oh, we can also name the floors, too. Oh, that's so cool. You can customize everything so you know what you're doing at that time. If you want to come back later, you can check your notes, essentially. All right. Actually, I also want to claim some more buildings and get those resources going. I'd like to salvage some of those for additional construction. Ooh, there's some good ones. We're going to have trash all over. Let's go ahead and build some uh, quick trash cans. Insufficient living space still. Uh, no monetization in range. That's okay. We need the conversion capsule first. So we have housing for four workers. Four more workers. So we should be able to find a ship that's got four. And we're getting the salvage complete, too. Well, let's go to the factory. I'll just build it there quickly. Oh, oh, we can... Yeah. We can copy buildings, too. A lot of things for your convenience. So if we build the perfect building that's wonderfully balanced, we can build it again. Nice. Build another small relay. And we could probably do some more storage for trash here. Alright, we're going to build another energy relay. And probably make some more power. Since we're uh, negative 8. That's why we're not getting enough, but... I don't have enough room in the factory to do it. In the main HQ. So we have to do it at the factory. So, let's build some more energy producers, shall we? Plop that there. And we'll be able to export the power. I think we can do two to one on these. I believe you can do two generators per one fuel fabricator. That should give us enough uh, stuff to make the fuel. So let's speed things up a little bit. Taking a look around. Learning how things work feels good to remember everything again. The laser turrets, for example, in your defense can be upgraded and they pull from batteries. And so obviously the longer you sustain fire against enemy ships, the more those batteries will be drained. And fuel storage is also a thing too, so you can store, or gas I suppose, as she mentioned. Uh, the gas can be stored. And we can also do a lot of uh, exporting of a lot of different uh, goods, too. Which is Q. Especially pain when it comes to the rebels. Lots of options to trade and do some bitness. Alright, we have plus three fuel. We want, we want to bring that down to either zero or plus one. There we go. Now we're finally energy uh, positive. Fantastic. All right, cool. Well, let's go back here. Anything we can do now? I guess we'll hire the two, or the three, four, two. And there they come. Hey, all right. Got it going on. Nice. 
So now the workers will come in, and now we can go ahead and go back to the HQ. And then convert employees. This waste will be full until we build a, a burner for it. So let's convert at least one employee for human assets, as they requested so graciously. All right, so there should be an employee in that capsule. Soon. Soon. There we go. Wow, it's like getting electrocuted. Oh, look at all the waste. Oh, and he vomited. Wonderful. Well, now he's ready for those monetizations. All them ads. Founder, I was wondering when you'd arrive. We got a lot of work to do. I'm Alexa Carrick, your military advisor. Around here, they call me the Admiral. Carrick, how appropriate. I manage your ships, armaments, and military personnel. This is the name of a ship. Plain language, that means I make sure that rebels and our competitors don't kill us. I've worked with a lot of startup cities here on Titan, so don't worry. I've seen it all. Landfaller cities come and go like the rain. For now, keep your eyes open and your mind sharp. If we want to survive on this poisonous rock, we'll have to work hard. Okay. Let's do it. Founder, your raw resources could be doing so much more for you. Each resource is crude at first, but the refinement process makes them that much more effective at construction. With each refinement, the resource gains value and thus represents a greater portion of the construction costs. This is how you get the most out of your resources. Raw resources will only get you so far. To start the refinement process, build a level one processor and be sure to plan some empty space around it. Build another factory for that. Now we could also uh, upgrade this factory by having it connect to another one. So in order to upgrade factories, we have to build one factory, then the other, and then we can upgrade by connecting them together. So you'll have to build two buildings and then do one upgrade. So that'll be a good thing for it. So build a level one processor to upgrade resources, plan empty space around it. So essentially what we're going to be doing is we're going to take minerals or isotopes and bring them from level one to tier two or tier three, to which will give us uh, more construction units. So it's like, um, it's like a refinery. They call it a processor, but it basically makes the materials more powerful in a way, more useful. And think of it like taking a log and then cutting into planks or beams. Like it's much more useful than a log because it could be tailored for so many different construction techniques. All right, let's build a level one processor. So where are those? Oh, I'm, oh these are new. I don't remember the... I don't remember these at all. Except minerals for refining through a processor. Isotopes. Oh, I do remember these. But these are for the other tiers. Okay, so let's build a mineral processor. And we do need to plug that in. So this essentially means that a resource needs to come in from storage, I believe. We'll have to figure this one out. I've forgotten completely. Land empty space around it. Yes. All right, let's do... I guess we'll chalk it up to experience there gonna create waste that might be why we need that and we'll need that energy too the energy bridge and the uh, relay all right we gotta go out to the city and take down some more buildings oh is it snowing wow it's like freaky snow go ahead and claim these buildings the larger ones are Claimable, really, without even surveying them. But we'll survey because we have to. We can also tell our people to go out and mine some of this as well, these mineral patches, and so we can get pure minerals that way. Now we're down to 21 influence. But we can ask our employees to come down here and start mining isotopes and minerals too. And we can survey the remaining buildings. Look at that lighting. One thing that struck me about this game was all the different colors and how it uh, was very good in terms of neon. Uh, cyberpunk, really, but not taking place on a futuristic Earth, but kind of more of a dystopian Titan. But yet we're rebuilding and it's exciting because we're, I don't know, not going to make the same mistakes in the past that we've made so many times before. Except we're probably going to 
make the same mistakes we've made so many times before. You get it. All right, let's go for more resources, right? Uh, only six isotopes, but no artifacts, so I guess we'll just we'll take the L on that one. Four artifacts, that's pretty good. And we'll see what's in this building, too. Of course, we need the council's approval to claim that. But we've got isotopes and we got minerals, so that's good. All right, let's build that level one processor now. So that's a... That's a mineral input module. And this is a level one processor, so I think we need both. So this actually might go towards the end of this. Let's dismantle that for now. But I think it's... Um, Accept minerals for refining through a processor. Okay, so we have to do processor, then input module, then uh, the waste module. I'll have to kind of remember how this all works. Uh, we need six mineral CUs. Or actually, we need ten. Let's see what we got for mining ships. Can we buy materials? Kind of low on influence. Unless we trade some artifacts. Looks like right now it's mostly people. Ugh. Oh, actually, that'd be good. This one's from a place called Aerith. Huh. Never heard of that before. Cool, now we're getting free materials. Now when the materials are delivered, I believe they still have to be stored by employees, so I think somebody will come to pick them up? No, oh, damn, this is a banger. Music's ridiculous. This is the type of game where you do want to think about maybe possibly buying the soundtrack. But I would just fire up the game and just listen to it this way. That's good. Alright, so how do we do this? Level 1 processor. Then maybe it's the mineral input module. I remember this is always tricky my first time. And then after the first time, the good thing is everything else is the same. So when you start to process level 2, it's the same. Or if you do isotopes, it's the same. Let's see how this works. You'll probably give me a call and be like, hey, we need you to do this now. <laughs> oh, well. That's why tutorials are su super handy. Especially if they introduce characters to you and are not uh, so wordy. When you have someone speaking to you, you can kind of remember their voice, at least in my experience. And you can remember what they told you to do. Shanda. You now have a processor for refinement, yep. but it will not function without the required modules. I know. First, you need an input module associated with the resource you wish to refine. Then, you'll need an employee module and an employee free to operate it. Once you have that, an output module will be necessary to receive the refined resource. And finally, you have the option to attach a waste module to catch any waste instead of letting it litter your factory floor. Each step requires different amounts of time to complete, but I'm quite confident you can work that out for yourself. Thank you, sir. Well, let's try to find the optimal way. So it, it essentially, this is like a, a machine that you put in the middle, and these other things are like consoles that you put around it. Now I recall this. Puzzle boss. I have to defeat the puzzle boss of Industries of Titan. All right, so we have our output module, employee module, L1 processor, and waste module. Is there anything to go in? Hmm. Processor. Okay, so we want input, output, employee. There's our output. So we need an input as well. Okay, so we got to move this further. I'll get it. Yeah, all right, let's try that one more again. Let's do output, employee, waste, and then we want an input of some sort, right? Mineral input, right. But we need more minerals. 
So we're going to wait till some are mined from the surface here, to which there is still a mediocre amount. Mediocre amount of minerals. 38. Not bad. That's pretty good, actually. Enough for our purposes to get this done. Let's wait for that to go up to 5 again. And back to the factory. So we could name our factories, too. We could call this one, you know, the processing factory. We could name the other one, like, uh, uh, slum housing or something like that. Whatever we want. There we go. Hey, I figured it out. 17th attempt, but darn it, I did it. <laughs> so another goal of this game, once we've got all of this up and running, is of course to, you know, export. We're an industry, right? So we want to make money, but we also want to make influence and such. And one of the major end goals of setting all of this up will be to continuously expand our factories uh, to produce more and thus expand our command centers to be able to reach more resources out here like larger deposits of minerals and isotopes. There's nodes that we can connect to. So there'll be like large areas that we can mine for minerals and whatnot and pump back to the main base. But then out on the very edges of the map are the rebels, which you can see their threat levels at 13. Eventually they'll start coming in more frequently to attack us and we can build defense turrets to shoot them down and they will try to attack our buildings and we can always burrow inside if we need to. And so we can try to, you know, secure our HQ, so that way they don't destroy it. But, and I want to show you what that looks like, but eventually the enemy will try to, uh, you know, attack us so frequently that it's going to be feasible for us to make, to make our own ships and go out and find the enemy base. We'll actually be able to go out and raid them and attack. And uh, so, you know, we defend for a while, but then eventually attack. And once we destroy, according to the campaign mode, their HQs or their uh, spaceports, then they can't attack anymore, but that's just for the campaign. Otherwise, survival mode and possibly the skirmish mode allows for a much more aggressive enemy uh, to attack us. All right, let's go back into that factory and see if we can get them to um, start working for us again. So attach an input module. All right, so we need the employees to do that. Of course, they couldn't work there while it was going up and down, but now we can also... We, uh, we need to make the power now, so let's go ahead and get the small relay going. And we can also try to build our energy uh, bridge, which we need one more mineral for. The isotopes are a little more rare. They're kind of like, uh, you know, if you use three minerals, it's like three minerals to every one isotope that you use. At least that's usually what the, rice, uh, the recipes are, unless you use them at all. Like, sometimes there's no reason to use them. Now, the employees here have more minerals on the floor than what we have in storage. So if we put a storage here, we, we actually have three plus... Uh, nine here. So they just need to put that back into storage to count. So yeah, now you saw that guy pick that up. Now he'll go and store that, and boom, now we have four for our energy bridge. Pretty cool. Pretty nifty. We'll have to build a couple of those. We can always build larger ones, but for the start, it's probably better to build the small ones. And then we can start connecting things. Actually, I wonder if these two will be able to connect to each other. Maybe they can link the power across. Let's see how that works. So this one's not getting energy on grid two, because the energy bridge is not yet built. It needs uh, one more mineral to be delivered. There we are. Ah, so they do ping it back and forth. Excellent. That's cool. So the energy can actually travel that way. All right, now we just need an employee here. Uh, but we need more power, so let's go ahead and do that. We'll build another generator. And another uh, gas fabricator or whatnot. So that would be... We're under fuel. Yeah. Now, we do have fuel storage, so... We'll kind of run on the extra fuel we have stored for now. But there is a great way to kind of Tetris these structures together and build, like, different size fuel tanks and things like that. Come on, lyrics? Very nice. All right, cool. Ah, yes, of course, we need energy output for this. So another bridge. And that can also ping to the exporter, so that'll go to the whole grid. Nice. Beautiful. So now we're power neutral and we have plus four fuel, so we can build more power. Founder, now that you're refining your resources, you can soon invest in a more diverse portfolio of buildings. Larger devices and buildings require more construction units. Yep. Paying for these with raw minerals is foolish, not to mention inefficient. Without your input, we can choose which resource will be most optimal for the building. 
but you can cycle through which resource tier to use for construction by clicking the mineral or isotope box at the top of your surveillance view. Higher tiers account for more construction units. Use them wisely. Yeah, so right now it's a one-to-one -one ratio. Tier two is a... It looks like... Oh, it's a five-to-one for the uh, tier two minerals and a three-to-one for the tier two isotopes. So basically the goal is to make better and better resources so that way we use less and less of them so we can convert minerals into much higher quality thingies and stuff technical terms you know <laughs> so then we have to clear the whole map and that's just level one of the campaign beefiness beefy juicy melty gooey oh so industries of titany oh yeah well, there you have it, a little peek on what's new in Industries of Titan for the 1.0 release, but we can only barely scratch the surface of the planet, and I love this game so much that I want to do some live streams and more content on it in the future. You can go back and check out all the other live streams and videos on what it used to look like and feel like back in the day. You can use this as what's now changed in version 1.0, and in the future, you can look forward to more content on Industries of Titan. Thanks again for watching, thanks for subscribing, thanks for smashing that like button again. Check the link down below in the description if you'd like to check out industries of titan for yourself and add it to your wish list or get it today thanks again everybody for watching